This episode of Techno Buffalo is brought to you by Ting. What is Apple's CEO doing in Sun Valley? What is Amazon doing hiring a former Windows Phone executive to direct their app store? And what is Microsoft doing filing patents that hint at not one, but multiple versions of their next generation Xbox? It's Friday the 13th, so we can just speculate wildly. Let's do it. It's Techno Buffalo's Rumor Roundup. Hey, what is going on, everybody? And welcome to an extra spooky edition of Rumor Roundup. No, Halloween didn't come early this year, but it is Friday the 13th. So that gives us license to get even crazier than we usually do with the rumors. And also, especially if it's a full moon tonight. I don't know, is it? I have no idea. Be careful out there. Apple CEO's Tim Cook spotted this week at Allen & Company's annual mega gathering of mega executives in Sun Valley. They had invited former Apple CEO Steve Jobs to the conference over and over again, and he never went. But Tim Cook, the paparazzi, chasing him around like he was LeBron James meets Marilyn Monroe. Anyway, Cook has been spotted with Square CEO Jack Dorsey and the CEO of Akamai, the streaming media. Other Akamai? Akami? I'm going to pronounce that wrong. Anyway, and all kinds of tech and media luminaries. But why is he there? Cook is, uh, you know, deigned to comment on his real reasons for being there other than saying that he's having lots of private meetings and is enjoying his time. And apparently he's been dubbed with the nickname Mr. Popular because the other bigwig executives have been waiting for years for Apple to send somebody. Now that they have, everybody wants to talk to Apple. And why wouldn't they? Because Apple is worth like a gajillion dollars right now. No details on why Cook is there, but the speculation is running towards the long rumored Apple TV project. No, not the little $99 box that lets you watch Netflix and stream stuff from iTunes. But the big deal that was alluded to in the biography of Steve Jobs in which he now famously said he had finally cracked the code and had disrupted the TV industry. It may be that Cook is in Sun Valley trying to broker some deals to launch the new Apple TV platform with a big bang. Or it might just be that Tim Cook's not Steve Jobs and he likes going to conferences and talking to people. I don't know. But for the sake of rumors, I'm looking at the Apple TV project and I'm hoping this turns into something newsworthy because news is fun, that's why we're here. Earlier this week, Amazon was able to snatch up the former head of Windows Phone developer experience, Brandon Watson, to join their efforts, whatever those efforts may be. Now this week it's been reported that Robert Williams, Microsoft's former senior director of Windows Phone business development, has joined Amazon and his new role, according to LinkedIn anyway, is App Store director. So Amazon does have an App Store and they do sell apps via their Kindle Fire tablet. But everybody and their cousin is expecting Amazon to launch their own smartphone, perhaps by the end of this year. So it makes sense that Amazon is looking to snap up some of the best and brightest minds in the mobile game. Rumors abound that Amazon will be launching a smartphone that runs on a forked version of Android, kind of similar to what they've done with the Kindle Fire, taking Android, really building their own operating system on the Android core. No details on what that smartphone might be, might do, might look like, might weigh, might sound like, might smell like. But again, conventional wisdom, that seems to be the theme of this week's show, eh, something in the four to five inch screen range because that's what all the kids are buying this week. Stay tuned for more on Amazon building its mobile team for whatever it is they're doing. Kindle Fire 2, smartphone, something. All right, let's take a break, hear from our sponsors, and then we'll come back with a little bit of news, or at least rumors, related to Xbox patents. I've been covering the mobile industry for what, going on seven, eight years now. When I first got into uh, covering mobile, there was no iPhone, smartphones weren't a big deal in the United States. It was all about the Nokia N series and the Sony Ericsson K series and Windows Mobile, not Windows Phone. In those past six or seven years, things have evolved drastically. Touchscreens are all the rage, app stores are all the rage, we're in this post-PC era, etc., etc. But one thing that hasn't really evolved, or at least not in a way that I'm satisfied with, is rate plans, is services that carriers offer. Ting is trying to do something about that. Run by a bunch of geeks frustrated with the status quo. Ting is a new service that's trying to bring clarity, usability, and big savings to mobile phone users. They've got one rate plan. They call it simple. They call it honest. They say that it only charges for what you use. Minutes, messages, and megabytes are all tracked and billed separately. If you go over your allotment, you're just bumped up to the next pricing tier. If you don't use up all of your minutes, megabytes, or messages, then you get a refund credit to you at the end of the month. Easy, simple, sounds pretty fair. In Ting's own words, there are no ridiculous fees, 
and no BS. We like that, we like no BS. Right now, you can go over to technobuffalo.ting.com and check out their service. They've got an online savings calculator where you can punch in the specifics, not just of your current plan, but of how much you're actually using the stuff. You can get this information from your uh, monthly statement, whatever carrier you're on, plug it into Ting's calculator, and they'll let you know how much you could be saving. They run on Sprint's network. They've got some of the latest Android 4G devices. And basically what you do is you buy your own device up front and then you just pay as you go. So you're not locked into a contract either, which I also think is pretty cool. And right now, if you sign up, you get a $50 credit. Just go to technobuffalo.ting, T-I-N-G.com. And best of all, you only pay for what you use and you get a refund for what you don't use. All right, last but certainly not least, Ars Technica, which is an awesome, awesome, awesome website if you like to dive deep into the innards and outers of the technology that we're all using. Ars Technica has an article this week about a patent that they recently discovered that Microsoft filed. And I have to read this from the article because uh, I don't even understand what these words means really. It's a patent for a quote, scalable multimedia computer system architecture with QoS quality of service guarantees. It describes the design for a game system that is capable of allowing platform services to scale over time. And then as the author, Kyle Orland, so nicely explains, those quote platform services include pretty much everything the hardware does besides directly running games, maintaining the OS, handling traffic, interpreting inputs, potentially screaming content to nearby tablets or recording TV shows. In other words, Microsoft's got this big crazy patent that hints that there could be multiple versions of the next generation Xbox with scaling architecture that lets it do all kinds of different things depending on the need and lets the pl platform scale over time. But we'll just get back to the heart of the rumor here and we'll leave it at that. Potential multiple versions of the Xbox 720 and some of the details line up with earlier leaks about the 720. So check that out. I'm giving a shout out to a different site because they're doing good work. Ars Technica, Kyle Orland, you can check out his article for all the details, including an awesome diagram that has multiple GPUs and arrows and little labels that say figure nine. All right, that'll do it for this week. Thanks again to our friends at Ting for sponsoring the show. Thanks to Revision 3 for having us. Thanks to you for watching. And again, it's Friday the 13th, so be careful. Things get crazy on Friday the 13th. We'll be back, we'll be back next week with an all new edition of the Roundup. And of course, new episodes of Ask the Buffalo and What's the Apps, Revision 3, Techno Buffalo, three times a week. Until then, my name is Noah Kravitz. Thanks for watching. Have an awesome week. We'll see you later. Bye-bye.